Looting in Tarkov can be overwhelming and hard to keep track of. With nearly 3,000 items in the game, and an economy that's always changing, items can go from being worth tens of thousands of rubles to just a few thousand overnight. So to help everyone out, I put a list together that'll not only help you sort through your loot quicker, but it'll add a blacklist that you can use so you're never picking up loot that's basically junk and wasting your time. Now this list isn't going to be items of things like graphics cards and LEDXs, the obvious things that everybody knows worthwhile. This is going to be kind of an unexpected list. I'm hoping there's going to be items on here that you've never thought of, you don't know how to find, or you didn't know were worth money. Now Tarkov Market itself has a tier list. It's pretty good, but it's pretty simple. It basically just does stuff based on price per slot, not necessary utility or what the value of that item is because items have value regardless of what they sell for on the flea market. So my list is gonna be a lot different than this, but I suggest go taking a peek at that. You might find some items on there that you weren't realizing were worth a bunch of money. So we'll start off with the S tier loot list and work our way down. Uh, I know I probably should put this at the end to keep you to watch longer, but you'll just skip through it anyways and get to where you see an S on the screen. So we'll get it done and early out of the way. Now these items aren't just worth money non found in raid that's selling to the trader. They have utility. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Now the first one we're gonna talk about is the flat screwdriver. And you might not realize how much this is worth, but this thing can push 14, 15, 16,000 some days. Uh, and the reason is, is because you use it to craft circuit boards. Now I'm crafting right now with circuit boards. You can see that the, the reason this is such a popular craft is one circuit boards make really good money. So it pushes this price of screwdrivers up pretty high sometimes. Whenever I see them pretty cheap like this, I snatch up a bunch of them, but you will see these push 14,000. And even if you get them in your secure container and you die with them, it's worth that 13 or 14,000 because now you don't have to buy it. You can use it to turn it into circuit boards and make a bunch of money. Now the TP2000 doesn't have as much utility. Yes, there's crafts with it, but it's a good thing to keep just because of what it's worth to the traders. Whether it's found in raid or not, you know, people usually sell this even if it is found in raid because they're saving the fee. You're getting 22,000 after finding one of those. So I'll often find one of these. I'll pull out my serve kit and put this right in there just because all I got to do is find even a million eyes and a dog tag, and it's worth more than that serve kit. So that's TP2000 bolts. Now, everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, I know bolts are valuable, but I don't think people always realize how valuable they are. You can get these things for 25,000, 30,000 sometimes. And with all the crafts that are available for bolts out there, if you even if you get them non found in raid because you put them in your secure container, they are worth a bunch of money. And the same applies for the green batteries. The green batteries worth a bunch. Now people undersell these all the time. You know, you're selling them for 25, 30 here. In reality, you should be selling green batteries for like 55, 60,000, uh, just because people burn through them when the barter comes in. But even out of raid, that's why they're worth a bunch of money. Not only can you sell them to the trader for like 16,000, looks like 16,000 here to therapist. You can use them for that Bitcoin barter. You have to camp on mechanic and do it right when he resets, but you can get it, which makes them worth 50 or 60,000. So again, that's another item that always goes into my secure container. Now, next up is rigs. And I picked three specifically. There's more out there than this, but these are three that I get really happy when I see. So the TV-110 and the CPC both take up 12 slots, right? Well, if you look at them, the TV-110 provides you 23, and so does the CPC. So this means you're taking 12 slots in your backpack and turn it into 23 slots. So when you fill this thing up, even if the rig isn't found in raid, it gives you so much more room in your backpack. And that's what it boils down to in looting in Tarkov. The more spaces you have, the more loot you can get out of raid with. Pretty straightforward. Now, some people might see the scav vest and be like, well, what the heck? That doesn't, it gives you six slots and it takes up six slots. The difference is the scav vests are worth a bunch of money. I love finding scav vests on scavs. I'll pick up, sometimes I get it right with four of them. Then I'll list them for 15,000 a piece. It doesn't take up any more space in my inventory. They're full of loot themselves. And then I get an extra 15K out of those six slots that I wouldn't normally get. Now, the next one we're going to move on to is weapon parts. Now, there's three primary reasons these things are worth a bunch of money. Either they're used in the mechanic uh, gunsmith task line, they don't have a trader, there is no sell for them, or they're meta gear, or some combination of the three. Some of these check all three of those boxes and they're worth a fortune. And one of those, for example, is the R43 Val. So if you want to, uh, the Rotor 43 Val pistol grip and buffer tube, this thing here, uh, you, there is a barter for it, which blows me away why people would spend 140,000 on this, upwards of 200,000. I've sold them for 175, 180 usually. But this thing is the only, the only way to buy it with rubles is on the flea market. Traders don't sell it. Uh, it's used for a task in mechanic. And it's basically the meta build, even though it's not that great. If you want to put this on an ASVAL, this is what you do. Now, the 260 millimeter barrel for the AR, again, used in a quest. But 
Also, it's locked behind a high level trader, which means people at low level can't buy it. On top of that, some of these meta builds where people are building short barrel M4s, you need it. So it pushes this barrel into the 65, 70, 80,000 range sometimes. And it's only a two slot. And that's the easy way to remember it is it's an AR-15 barrel that's two slots. There's a 416 barrel out there, don't get it. It's not worth much, but the AR-15 two slot is always worth money. So if you see it out there, pick it up, throw it in your inventory, worth a bunch of money. Now to go along with this, you have the UTG four point. This is also used in a task with the M1A. Uh, it, it is locked behind a high level trader. And this guy has no idea what he's got here. These things sell regularly for 175, 200,000 rubles. Um, it's used in mechanic on the M1A build, uh, as well as some other people's builds that they have. But again, like the other ones, there is a barter for this at level two peacekeeper. It's very cheap. So don't be spending money on this if you don't have to, but if you have one, keep in mind that you can sell it for a bunch of money. Now the next three are pretty straightforward. Uh, they're used for meta gear. They, they are used in mechanic tasks, but they're used in meta gear. They're locked behind high level traders. So it makes them worth a bunch of money. If you're finding an RK2, see here, 100, 120,000, a shift grip, which is anywhere from 70 to 90,000, depending on the day, or this QIRS 4.2 rail. They are worth a fortune. This probably doesn't even have any listed. You can sell this thing for over 100,000 all day long. And that's because this is the only way to put a handguard on the meta AK builds out there right now, the lowest recoil, highest ergo. Uh, so it's locked behind level four mechanic, which means you can't buy it unless you're really high level. So if you're wanting to build a meta uh, AK in your 20s and 30s, you're spending the money on this QRS 4.2. So the last two I have for you are suppressors on the weapon side. Uh, the Rotex 2 is used on your MP7s. Uh, it's really expensive from the trader itself. It's also at a high level trader, which makes it even harder to get. So you're gonna see these things go for 70 to 75, 80K most days. So when you find one of these in raid, if it's found in raid, make sure you get out with it because it's worth a bunch of money. On top of that is the Ultra 5. Again, this is not sold by traders at all. It's only on the flea market. The most common place I find these is on Rashala's guards, that 8R that that one Rashala guard will usually run will have one of these on there. So make sure if you see that, you take that weapon part with you because it is worth a bunch of money. It's uh, it's used for a lot of meta builds. Uh, it's rare and you can only get it in raid. So that's where its price comes from. Now there's a lot of other suppressors that are worth a lot of money out there. I just wanted to point these ones out because they are the top two. When it comes into the last two items, this is kind of weird for people maybe, but um, these are two of my favorites that I pay attention to quite a bit. The first one's Amelia Rye Croutons. And yes, this thing's only worth anywhere from nine to 12K, but it's worth that whether it's found in raid or not. And that is because of a barter with Jaeger that gives you sugar. This is kind of a newish barter. It's with level two Jaeger. It's only been around this year. So a lot of people don't necessarily know it's here and it's five Amelia Rye's for a sugar. But right now, sugar going 55, 60K. That means with five of these, these are worth, you know, 10 to, 10 to 12K. And again, these are items that I'll put in my secure container because if I die, I know I'm still gonna get some value out of them. And five of these worth of sugar is worth a bunch because I'm crafting moonshine all day long. Now the last one is dog tags. And a lot of people I see them keep dog tags, they won't put them in their secure container. Uh, they won't swap something out that's not worth very much money like a serve 12 or a splint or whatever. And my cutoff is 45. You can go lower if you want, but 45 means your dog tag is worth about 17K, maybe a little bit more. So anything above that is worth just that much more money. So it's actually worth quite a bit of money to the traders just by itself. All right, so now for the A tier list. Uh, this is this is still great loot. And some of this, again, might not be shocking to you, but I'm hoping I can find a couple of gems in here you're not paying attention to. And the first thing we're gonna start off with is stims. It doesn't matter which ones you find. It doesn't matter if it's the more common morphine, adrenaline, propotol, or some of the rare ones like the SJ9 or the ETG, ETGC, uh, the green stim as everybody calls it. These are all worth keeping because even if you don't get out of raid with them, you can see that they're worth a bunch to the trader. But some of them, if you get out of raid with them found in raid, uh, I mean, this one's absurd, right? The the ST9, SJ9, so I don't even know if one's gonna come up. I've seen it list for a million, two million, 500,000, 400,000. I don't know if it even ever sells at that price. I'm hanging on to it because I think it's cool. I got one off a of cultist once before the cultist event. So happy to have it. But some of the things like Zagustins and uh, ETGs and Propotols and SJ6s will sell for a bunch, whereas some others it just makes sense to sell them to a trader. So if you're finding stims, throw them right in your secure container, regardless of uh, what they are, because even morphines are worth like 11K. Now fuel, um, this might not be something that belongs on the list, but I want to bring this up to people for a couple of reasons. Found in raid fuel is worth a ton of money because even if it's empty, once you, so I burned this up in my generator, this blue one, 
I can still sell it. Uh, let's get rid of the operational only. I can still sell it for 60, 70,000 because people use them to craft mag boxes. So what I'll do is I find and raid fuel. It always comes with me. I don't care what else I got. I'll throw it out because it saves me the money of buying it. I can burn the fuel for free. And then I can even sell the metal ones for like, you know, 20, 30 K, depending on what people are willing to pay for them to craft their grenade boxes or their flechette ammo, whatever people are buying them for. So that's why I wanted to bring it up is just to make sure that if you find a found and raid one, you can burn it and still sell it and make a bunch of money. Now, M67s are one that I find funny. Whenever I find somebody that's like low level, you know they're still using their starter grenades probably. These are not grenades you should probably use. They're okay, the fuse on them's a little long, but they're worth so much more money just selling them than they are using them. They're way more expensive than any other grenades. But I regularly sell these for over 20,000. And if I get ones that are non-found and raid like this one, I turn them into green gunpowder and they're worth even more money that way. Now, one I wanna point out, and I know people run over these because I'll do scav runs or I'll be on reserve and run through somewhere that's been looted and I'll see these scope mounts sitting on shelves and inside boxes and unlooted. A 34 millimeter scope mount, it doesn't matter which one they are, they're worth a bunch of money. Some of them are worth more than others. But if you see 34 millimeter, you better be keeping that. Because as you see right here, this thing's worth 80, 90K. Price swings a lot because it depends on when people are looking for them for the mechanical line task or using the other stuff. but. It's there, it's worth a bunch of money. Don't skip over the 34 millimeter scope mounts. Now, ammo is one that is touchy for people because it does require a couple of things to be worthwhile. One, usually it's talks about and having in full stacks, which is why I kind of brought up some of these and some of them not. So for example, BT and BP are always worth taking out a raid because you're gonna find them in places where you're usually getting 30 of them in a mag found in raid, whether you're killing scav bosses or even if you're finding AKs in raid, the mag usually has 30 rounds of BP in it. And the beauty of it is, is you get even 30 rounds, you're talking nine, 10,000 rubles. So now you start pushing 60 round stacks, which is what you can fit in one, you know, 60 rounds in a single slot. You're talking 18, 19,000 rubles. And that's with BP, that's the cheaper one. Once you start talking BT, you're talking, you're into the 20s and 30Ks, depending on what you're selling them for that day. So always make sure you're taking BT out of, uh, found and raid BT out, or to keep it if you find it, just because it saves you from having to buy it. Now, aside from this is ammo that you find in raid from time to time. And the first one's PBM. This will be in little boxes. People see it's boxes of 16. You'll find it in ammo crates. And people don't usually pick it up because it's nine by 18, right? Well, well, who would ever pick up nine by 18 ammo? I'm gonna show you here, PBM actually sells for quite a bit because this is the top tier ammo, if you will. It's the highest pen, um, nine by 18 ammo. Uh, so it's in kind of high demand with uh, people that are running Ketters and some of the other stuff for the pistol runs. And it's hard, if people don't pick it up and sell it. I mean, you can see here, there's not but maybe a thousand rounds for sale on the market right now, aside from what proper has. So I regularly sell this for over 50 or 550 rubles. Right now, you know, it's pushing 650, 600, 650 is pretty high, but that 500 all day long. Now this next ammo used to be S called SP13, but it's BZGZH now when you see it. And this is the nine by 21 ammo. This stuff is worth a ton of money for a couple of reasons, crafting and because it's the best round. But you can see here, even if you get out like with 10 of them, I mean, you're making 20,000. So you'll see these in stacks of anywhere from like, you know, in the teens, 10, 15, all the way up to 30 or 40 of them when you're looting uh, ammo crates. So if you see this in a stash, an ammo crate, make sure you're taking it out of raid with you because it's worth more than most anything else you have. I can promise you that. Now, moving past ammo is two items that I run into all the time on customs because Rashala's guards have them and Scaf's have them. And the first one's round glasses. Uh, aside from the argument of should you wear sunglasses or not, you got free slot on your face. You can throw these sunglasses on and they're worth anywhere from 20 to 30K. Depends on the time of day. And this goes hand in hand with the schmaska, the whole, the ski mask with holes for eyes, the ski hat with holes for eyes, worth 20K, one slot. Now they're worth a ton of money because you use them for the hex grid barter. Uh, both of these are part of that along with the Yushanka caps, but those aren't worth as much. Uh, these things push kind of high prices for people chasing those. So make sure you're keeping them, taking them out of raid. And moving into barter items, um, just kind of specifics I want to talk about with these because people might not realize they're worth money when they find them, especially if they're finding them in filing cabinets, which you do with power banks. Power banks show up in filing cabinets, but you'll see them sitting around in the world as well, just sitting there. Power banks are worth money whether you get them out of raid or not because you can use them to craft things. So a power bank sells to therapist for 12,000 rubles, right? But if you take this apart with craft, you can get two rechargeable batteries, which sells for about 22K, uh, a little bit more. But that's why these are valuable because whether they're found in raid or not, um, you can turn them into quite a bit of money or you can turn them into a defib. This is probably one of the bigger price points on a defib. Uh, you can craft those and make money with that if, even if you don't get them out of raid. 
Magnets, I see a lot of people run by these and not pick them up. They are worth a bunch. Sometimes they get kind of cheap. Like right now we're seeing them in that middle to high range. Sometimes they'll get down to like 15K, 20K, but I regularly sell mine for between 25 and 30. So you should be taking these instead of a lot of other stuff you'll find, especially when you're running around interchange. Uh, definitely worth more than wires or light bulbs or any of that stuff. Now the next ones are G phones. Uh, people usually keep these and they usually just vendor them, but I wanna bring something up. Now, if you're talking about the G phone X, the broken G phone X, Vendoring it usually is the best way to go. Sometimes you can get a little bit more than it. There is a craft, uh, a couple crafts you can use with them as well. So keep that in mind. But the broken G phone, you know, this thing isn't worth what you should sell it to the vendor for. You should be selling these on the market. You can almost always get 17, 18, sometimes even 20,000 for these uh, when the market kind of dries up a bit as people are crafting, you know, thumb drives and some of the other stuff in the Intel center with them. So if you're getting G phones, make sure you're checking and selling them versus just straight up vendoring them like you used, we used to all do is just vendor them. Poxarams are kind of an interesting one. Um, people might argue they don't belong in the A tier, but I think they do because they're one of these items that I'll always put in my secure container right away if I find it because I know they're worth about 11K. And if you get them out of raid, they're worth even more. And this is because they're used for a barter with the uh, labs card. You can get a, a labs card barter in these, which pushes the price up. So Poxarams are another one of those things that kind of have a multi-utility, um, but they're definitely worth money. And a lot of people might skip over them, not realizing they're worth a bunch of money. And the last two are food. Uh, they're probably some of the only food items that you find regularly that are worth a bunch of money. Uh, the Magica coffee. Magica. Thinky? Magica. I don't know how you say it. The coffee is worth uh always worth taking out it's worth it to the vendors um and it's also worth trading there's also crafts with it if you want to go that route with non found and raid and then condensed milk everybody always loots can you see this it's you know it's it's worth a half to serve 12 practically you know we go here and look at therapist you can see it's worth 15 714 to her it's worth a little bit less to jaeger if you're trying to push up his prices but condensed milk is always a keep it's worth more than probably 60 percent of the one slot items out there uh just in its value alone to the trader so that wraps up the a list um these are kind of your top tier uh items so far so we'll move into some of the lower tier items that uh, i'll pick up earlier in raid most of the time uh but tend to be thrown out and replaced by some of this kind of stuff all right, guys, we're going to take a quick minute here, uh, interrupt the video and talk about the sponsor, BenQ. They uh, they were nice enough to send me their EX2710Q monitor. It's a 27 inch, 165 hertz, one millisecond, all the goodies uh, sent over as a sponsorship for the video. I've talked about this in the past. I don't do a ton of sponsorships, not unless it's a product I believe in or that I really enjoy or I think is worth me pushing out to you guys. I don't want to push junk out to you. And I've used BenQ monitors for a lot of years. I've used them for 10, 12 years now. I used them uh, at the old job I used to have. That was the monitors we had. So when they reached out and offered me a monitor for this, I was pretty excited because I've never had a chance to play with any of their gaming monitors. Now, quite honestly, I've never played games or watched videos on such a beautiful monitor. It really blew me away even before I even started tweaking the settings. The BenQ light tuner and black equalizer technology combined with the HDRI settings bring out some amazing details in games. Playing night raids in Tarkov or even running around in Interchange are completely different experiences now with this monitor. I can see in the dark areas better and details I never even noticed in the game before are clear as day. Now combine this with the color vibrance and visual presets, it makes the vistas in games like New World absolutely breathtaking. Now, I don't use the speakers much, but it does have built-in 2.1 channel speakers powered by Travolo. It works great for the kids when they are watching videos or movies on the computer. I also have a desk mount since I'm running five monitors, but the stand that comes with it is really nice. It's adjustable, it looks super clean, and all of this comes with a three-year limited warranty. So I put some links down in the description if you want to check the monitor out for yourself. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I love it a great deal. Uh, it's the best monitor I've ever had. Uh, hands down, no questions asked there. But with that, we'll uh, we'll get right back into the video, into the next tier. All right, so this is our B tier, if you will. And these are items that I pick up every day uh, that are usually make it out of raid with me, but sometimes they don't if we find better stuff. It's just stuff to keep an eye out on. And the first one I wanna talk about is 855. And the reason I wanna talk about this is, is because most people don't see this as an ammo to keep. It's a junk ammo, it's crappy. Why would you keep this? Well, you find it pretty frequently on scavs. You know, you find an 8R scav, he could have anywhere from 60 to 120 to 150 rounds of this on him, depending on how many mags he spawns with, to some of the scav uh, bosses and guards will have 855. And a lot of people just throw the mag out um, especially if it's a mag that's not worth anything, don't think about the ammo. But 855 can actually sell for pushing 20K a slot if you have 60 in each in each slot, a 60 stack, if you will. And I think that just goes past most people. You know, if we look here, 
we can see that 855 is selling for about 200 to 300 around on the cheap end, but it definitely pushes the 350 to 400 sometimes as the market cycles and people go through stuff. So I think it's just something that it's overlooked by folks and don't realize that you can actually make a decent amount of money off a single stack of 855. Now, moving on from this, uh, these two items here, I love keeping because they're easy to sell. You just sell them to the vendor. LCDs and, and rechargeable batteries are both worth a half decent amount of money to the traders. You get almost 24,000 for the LCD and almost 11,000 for the rechargeable battery. So I'll very often pick these up and if it's early raid, they're going into my secure container and replacing stuff that's worth less because even if I die, I can get a little bit of money and you know, it's that min max attitude, if you will. Now going on beyond this are things that I like to pick up because they are worth selling to the vendors. Uh, wrenches don't get picked up a lot of people, but they can go for upwards of 14K. I usually pick these up until I get six, seven, eight of them. I have them stacked and then I'll list them overnight for about 13 to 15K, depending on where the market's at. And they sell every time. So they're definitely worth the spot. You just gotta have a little patience with them. And the same goes for hunting matches. As you can see here right now, they're selling for on the low end 10, but for the most part, about 13, 14,000. So if you're finding these, again, save till you get three, four, five of them and list them for a higher price at the end of the day. Now, ES lamps or the energy saving lamps are a little bit different of a category. You can sell them. I usually sell them for between 12 and 13,000, but they also provide a great uh, non found and raid benefit. And as that is some of the barters they have, we'll go look at the uh, barters here for the ES lamp, but you can get a tri-zip backpack for four of these. You know, even if you're buying them, this is a great deal, especially if you don't have tri-zips unlocked for purchase yet, because they're usually quite a bit more expensive. And then the the always popular F1 hand grenade barter. You can do a barter for a single F1 hand grenade, um, a single ES lamp for a, a, a hand grenade, and it's saving you money because these hand grenades, you know, you get your four from proper, but they push 14, 15, 16,000. So that's what makes these really popular to sell and to keep. Then lastly, syringes. Uh, something I think a lot of people overlook, but are worth a, quite a bit of money. And that's because there's a couple of crafts and other things you do with these that make them worthwhile. So if you're seeing them when you're looting med bags or med crates or on the tables in like white bishop on reserve, make sure you're keeping them because they are worth their slot. And then the last one in this group is the FP 100s. I love picking these things up and I hate picking these things up. One, they're easy, right? You've got nine slots. They're about 10K per slot because they sell for about 90,000 and you don't have to think about it. But on the other side, they take up nine slots and they can be hard to fit into your inventory, especially with certain backpacks and rigs. You get some PVP in, you get some better loot. Now you're throwing out this really big chunk uh, and trying to replace all the slots with more loot. So while I do get excited about picking these up and looting them, they are on the lower end of worth keeping just because they, uh, they worth, you know, they're worth anywhere from like 85 to 90 K and we're even seeing them down into the eighties right now. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're looting them, they might not always be worth their slots. Now for my C tier, this is a tier of stuff that I usually pick up, but I put them in the bottom of my bag. Um, like when I'm, I'm looting stuff, like I'll put it down here like this. And, and that tends to be the stuff I'm gonna throw out first because that's what all this stuff is, is stuff that I'm gonna throw out first. So while we're running through eight, I find fabrics, some of these things, they just don't hold their slots. And it, it's most foods, right? With the exception of like uh, condensed milk, uh, the energy drink, um, and some of the others, food just isn't worth keeping anymore. So that meds, wires, and most fabrics, I will just throw out once I start getting more loot. I'll pick them up because it's better than nothing. They can be about 10K a slot, eight to 10K a slot, uh, but they're a lot more work and they're a little bit harder to sell. So I usually just end up throwing these things out if I don't get through a raid. Now for our last two categories, the, the DNF, if you will. D is uh, a category where I put that they're usually not worth picking up, but they're better than nothing. So I'll leave it to you if you wanna take your time to pick these up or not. Uh, I usually do, but they're throw it out pretty quick for the most part. And we're gonna start off with motors, um, PSUs and tool sets because they're all four slot items and they just aren't worth all that many rubles. On a good day, motors might push 30, 35K, but that's the most you're gonna get out of them. And the same thing goes for PSUs and tool sets. They don't even get that high. There is a stretch in the wipe, uh, early wipe, where these things are worth a bunch of money or when a bunch of new players come back to Tarkov and they're looking to buy these things to upgrade stuff. But outside of that, these four slots are just, just not worth taking. Now on top of that are hoses and power cords. Now hoses, I'm glad they're doing it right now. You'll see hoses push kind of a high number. This is very rare. This happens maybe once a week, maybe once every other week where you just see a bunch of corrugated hoses show or disappear from the market and they go to 25, 30K. 
these things usually run 10 to 15k so i'll leave it to you if you want to loot them and risk or sit on them and maybe try to make your six seven eight k a slot that you can do that it's not something i usually pick up and the same goes for power cords though they do get a little bit higher more often you'll see power cords push that 20 to 22k occasionally but usually they run in that 12 to 15k and i know that because i buy them up at 12k 11k all the time because that's what i use to craft wires with is that level because you make the most money out of it so again an item that you might want to pick up but isn't really worth the slots now on top of this is firearms now there is an argument that if you have a firearm and you don't have a secondary sure pop that right there it doesn't take out any slot in your inventory great i'm not going to argue against that the bigger point is even with an ak-74un that is six slots takes up all the space you know even including the ammo that's inside of it and everything else you're going to maybe get 25 30k out of this thing all in all together if you're lucky which means this thing's only worth 5k a slot it's just not worth it now you can do things when you're in raid and you're looting with this like you can take the stock off right and then you can put attachments onto this thing and other stuff and kind of maximize that uh, value a little bit more but that's about it you got to get that cost per slot up with other attachments which is pretty hard to do unless you're like on reserve or sometimes labs but if you're in labs and you're worried about loot like this, I think your priorities are a little screwed up. So nonetheless, even M4s, doesn't matter if it's AK-74s, HK-416s, the guns themselves, even found in a raid, are not worth their slots. So make sure that if you have other loot showing up, you're tossing those things out and uh, taking the other loot versus these. All right, now the last category here really quickly is just stuff that I never pick up. If I see it, I just go right by it. I don't pick it up. It's not worth the time and effort. It's cats, wooden clocks, drills, broken LCDs, and long flat screwdrivers. They're items that take up a lot of space. They're not worth their area and particularly cats. So cats can be worth like 9K a slot, right? So it's not as bad as some of these others. The problem is, is a three by one, they can make Tarkov Tetris in your bag a little bit more difficult. They get in the way of some shit and things like that. So I usually don't pick these up. Um, if I see them, they're just something I go right over. I, I, don't, I don't even think about it, but I'll leave that choice to you. Wooden clocks on the other hand, I mean, you're talking 40K for a four slot that's on the high end that's if you sell them to a vendor it's the same deal you don't want to sell them for that on the flea market uh and then drills you have you know your 20k for four slots and broken lcds are barely 10k for two and long flats are like six to eight k for a two so they're just items i never pick up they're not worth the effort i don't even like thinking about them i see them i just skip over them so that's my take on loot in tarkov take it or leave it you're free to argue you're free to disagree Post in the comments some things that you do or some items that you might uh, think are better or worse than what I talked about. It's all about a discussion here, guys. Uh, this is just my experience. This is what I see from day to day. You might have a different one, and that is totally welcome. I love hearing that from you guys, um, especially in the comments. You guys come up with some pretty good ideas that help me with content, so appreciate that. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, uh, assuming I deserved it, which I hope I did. And I wish you the best of luck in your raids, and we'll see you in Tarkov.